She won most talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Okay, I've got the band all back together <laughs> to talk intermittent fasting. And in the chronology of my podcast, I had Jen Stevens on as my first guest because I'm a marketing genius. And I knew that that would, in my milkshake brings all the boys in the yard. We talked about that last night at dinner. But I knew that would attract people to my podcast. And then the more I did my podcast, the more my interests were about intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. as we know, because there it is still in the infancy, infancy stages for a lot of people. We're like, we have our PhD in it, but a lot of people don't. Then I had you on. And I shortchanged you and gave you a 30-minute episode because we thought another girl was going to be on the backside of it. And she petered out. She wasn't even good. She's some intermittent fasting expert. And her name will not be discussed, but I will give you her initials when I have champagne tonight. (laughs) I'll tell you. I will know. know. But my point is, after I had you... Lisa Fisher said. I know. That's why it's called Lisa Fisher said. But why I never had you on for the hour, but people would say after that episode, oh my gosh, I wish you had her on again. And then Star's episode is amazing. And Darren will put all that in the show notes. Your original episodes. Mm -hmm. Yours is amazing because of your, both of you had successful, transformative weight loss. Yours, different seasons of life. So we're going to talk about that. Yours, let's just go back over yours. You attack menopause. You kicked it and it's nuts. Mm. (laughs) Well, I learned that menopause is treated as a condition that there's just nothing we can do about. We just have to be along for the ride. And most physicians don't pay attention. They're like, why would I test your numbers? You're just going through this thing. (laughs) It's like, knowledge is power, people. And um, so I didn't realize that I would be on a mission to just have people talk about Mm -hmm. menopause. It's Mm -hmm. no big deal to talk Mm -hmm. about. I don't know why men shudder and leave the room. Mm -hmm. They pause. Men, oh, pause. (laughs) Is what happens, yeah. It is a big change that a woman's body is going through. And so for me, I, um, I hit menopause at 49, which is early. It's mm-hmm. about two, three years early. Mm-hmm. And I suddenly gained 50 pounds, which was a big God. and terrible part of it. But also I was in pain head to toe all the time. And I, my, I had brain fog. My equilibrium was off. I just yeah. was off, mm-hmm. off way off. Mm -hmm. And I would say to people, I feel like my body was overtaken by an alien. Like I'm Mm -hmm. just not myself. And I kept waiting to feel like myself again. So I was on this four and a half year quest to figure out how to feel like myself again. And people would say to me, they're like, wait, you're the healthiest person we know. I've been studying Mm -hmm. nutrition for um, since my late twenties. And so how could Someone who was taking such it good wasn't care looking of good for the rest of us. If you were right. having weight gain and didn't feel well, and you were the healthiest person everyone knew, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they were like, "What happened?" I'm like, "I don't know. I know it's hormonal. I know everything's out of whack, and I just learned so much along the way." Well, I was also hit hard by adrenal fatigue, being a New Yorker, staying up, eating dinner after ten o'clock every night. Mm-hmm. You know, that was certainly one way, one area. Well, wait a minute. I didn't take it was glamorized in the 80s and 90s because the whole Wall Street, the movie, remember Michael Mm -hmm. Douglas, they were drinking the coffee. Uh, Of course, they were doing illicit things too. But my point was, we were told for a long time, you you are a person, you're an honorable person if you can get by on six hours or less. We know that's a lie. Right. So I was always someone who needed a considerable amount of sleep. I just, it was just much later. I ate a lot later and slept a lot later. And I didn't realize one of the things I learned through this experience was how critically important, especially as women aging, we need, we do need to, I get the early bird dinner special (laughs) and we need to, and not be embarrassed about it and get in bed Mm -hmm. early. It, Mm -hmm. it will make a huge Mm -hmm. difference in how we feel every day and how we live Mm -hmm. the rest of our life. There's a lifespan, but there's also a health span. And I Mm -hmm. really want to feel really great, Mm -hmm. doing awesome right up until until the day I kick it. Mm -hmm. So there I was at age 54 at that point and just feeling despondent. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an optimist and I didn't want to give in to, oh, 
maybe it really does get worse and worse forever. Oh. Maybe, maybe I just have to be on more medication, mm. lumbering around, foggier, sicker, mm-hmm. heavier, forever. Mm-hmm. And I guess I have to give in to that or mm. believe in that. Mm. I'm like, no. And so I just had this little glimmer of hope left. And one night I found out about intermittent fasting and stayed up all night reading about it and was visiting my mom in Colorado and kind of stumbled down the steps the next morning, bleary eyed and said, I appreciate your prayers because I may have found an answer. And I'm starting this thing where I'll just eat later Mm -hmm. and explained it to her. And she said, well, that makes perfect sense. How may I support you? And And that's sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so those first two weeks of intermittent fasting, I was there in her house, have her complete support. So that's how I started that five helped. years ago. Yeah. And then you wrote your book when, what year? Two years ago, right? It launched on International Women's Day, my oh. birthday, March 8th, oh. uh, 2020, right as we went into lockdown, oh people my were gosh. getting my, my workbook. Mm-hmm. And um, I always encourage people to get the actual paper copy, the workbook, mm-hmm. order it from Amazon mm-hmm. because It's designed to write in it Mm -hmm. and contemplate and think and think things through and get out your favorite pens and and log your first three months of intermittent fasting. Or if you're an experienced intermittent faster and you want to focus in on what am I doing and what's Mm -hmm. working, what's not working, get my thoughts out on paper. It's designed for everybody. So 52 pounds was your total weight loss? 50 plus. 50 plus. Yeah. A little, you know. Okay. And you also have a tremendous story and... So this is what's good. We're in different seasons. You are in your 30s. Mm-hmm. We are in our 50s now. Mm-hmm. You don't. You won't have to face this. Don't you feel like that? People who we know this. People who start with an intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding lifestyle don't face the troubles of menopause. Well, Jen Stevens is a great yeah. example mm-hmm. because she started intermittent fasting well before menopause. And in her experience, she breezed right through. I mean, we can, you can ask yeah. her more about yeah. that when you talk to her. Um, I don't know if I would be so bold as to say, oh, because you're an intermittent faster, you won't have any trouble. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Right. Right. Because a, a woman's experience through menopause really depends on stress and sleep and yeah. food choices. Yeah. I mean, there's so many factors. But one thing we do know for sure is that Being a person who pauses from eating and eats a person who eats later in an eating window um, and pays really close attention to our own hunger and satiety and doesn't eat past that, that our hormones are in repair. That we can, and we have over 80 hormones. We don't just have three. Right. (laughs) So, so. Okay. So your story was in your Mm thirties, you'd had a bunch of children Mm -hmm. and did you wake up one day, kind of the same thing store and thought that scale number is yelling an ugly number at me. Yeah. It just, uh, one day I just, I feel it was about in 2016, I feel it was when the weight kind of kept packing on and it just like, and then I, I was crossfitting at this time. I was a Zumba instructor. I was doing all the things and the weight was just coming on and, and I was doing strength training and, and everything. And I couldn't figure out what, what was I doing wrong? And I, I was going back to trying to only have a shake in the morning for breakfast. <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I would go four or five hours and really try to not eat lunch till two. And then I would I try, you know, and you're dying and you're just yeah. white knuckling and you're hungry all the time. And then the weight just kept coming off. So I quit working out because I'm like, well, I'm putting all my energy and, <clears throat> excuse me, stress into working out and it's not doing any good. So what, what am I, you know, what am I, what am I going to do? And so, I mean, I was really getting to a point where, and I remember my, my mind seemed like the one nineties on the scale. And I remember thinking if that number hits 200, I'm just gonna like commit. Like, I don't know what I'm at. Cause I was so miserable. My body was so inflamed and everything hurt. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't even, I couldn't even go walk or go work out anymore. Did because you feel of, that way? Oh, everything. Because you were in the New York City yeah. Marathon. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, I, I couldn't, how I did could I go from anything. being a Zumba instructor mm-hmm. where you have to work 10 times harder than the people in the class? Cause you're trying to make everybody keep up with you, you mm-hmm. know, and get, and then how did I go from that to where my mom would say, let's just go take a walk. And I'd say, I, I can't, I get shin splints. My lower wow. back would start hurting. I mean, every, and then I would just felt inflamed. I literally felt like I could just feel myself getting fatter or something. Like it was just like, 
no end in sight. Mm -hmm. And one day, I, a high school friend texted me a picture of her, and I was like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. Like, I just couldn't believe it that she was my age and, and looked just like she did in high school. And then she just quickly said, I read this book called Delay, Don't Deny, yes. and it like has totally changed my life. And she goes, I know you hate to read, so get it on Audible. <laughs> and, right. and so I'm like, okay, that, that's a thing. I didn't even know you could get it yeah, on. So right. got it on Audible. And I'm and not to mention Jen's voice is just the cutest thing in the mm -hmm. world. I just wanted to listen to it all day. But I mean, light bulbs were going off to where I was like, that's why it didn't work when people, when I was telling people do this, do this and trying to train them and do this and they're not losing weight. And I'm like, Oh, insulin resistant. You're spiking your insulin all day. So I'm drinking that shake in the morning, spiking my insulin, but not getting any food or fuel for hours and hours. So then all that gets extra insulin gets stored away from the morning shake. And yeah. this repeats itself every day. Hence you get heavier and heavier. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, okay, like just time restrictive eating. I got this, like I can do this. And I just came out of the gates, started just like, like Jen's kind of the five hour window mm -hmm. thing. And so I would just get, make myself get to about one or 2 PM. That's kind of how I started out and then have about a five or so hour window. And then it just, the weight was just melting off and I couldn't believe it. And then I just kept going. And then before I knew it, I was at a, a later OMAD, you know, evening one meal window, a day. one mm -hmm. meal a day. Yeah. And just, uh, the weight was just shedding off and 81 pounds gone in less than a year. Wow. And just, that's unreal. unbelievable. Yeah. So now that you, cause you know a lot about health, do you think the inflammation then is insulin resistance? They're two different things, but they're intricately linked. And what I love is listening to Dr. Robert Lustig and Dr. Ben Bickman. I mean, who, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman. Uh, if you're watching, you've <laughs> changed my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's watching. He might. I know, he might. He might be. Right. Lisa Fisher said. Mm. So what they say is the weight is not the issue. The type 2 diabetes is not the issue. The issue, that's a symptom mm -hmm. of the underlying issues. And the underlying issues, which most people are dealing with, are insulin resistance mm -hmm. and inflammation. And if we can solve those two problems, we're healthier. Mm -hmm. So it's we go to our doctors because we're in pain, right? Or we're suffering from menopause. So we go to the doctor and they're like, lose weight. Well, doctor, how do I do that? They have no idea. So, uh, so then, no idea. so they think that weight is the problem. The weight isn't the problem. It's an indication of an underlying problem. So while I don't, in my coaching, I, I respect people's deep desire to lose weight. I mm -hmm. felt the same. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I felt more comfortable at a smaller size, mm -hmm. but that was not the issue. The issue was how terribly unwell I felt. I went from feeling very mm -hmm. well at age 43, 44 to feeling very, very not well. Mm -hmm. And so it was about a 10 year time span of trying to figure out really how to be better. And it's inflammation and it's insulin resistance. Well, I'm sorry you suffered, but we want thank to you. thank you for suffering and figuring it <laughs> thank out. You. Well, because then, that's, that's very telling what you're saying. And then I would say the other aspect of people's unwellness are gut imbalances. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then the liver. So that's if, right. if we, if we actually could shift from the idea of weight loss to mm -hmm. inflammation, mm -hmm. insulin mm -hmm. resistance, Healing mm -hmm. our gut and restoring the health of our mm -hmm. liver, like everything we eat and every minute fasting. It's like thinking about this deep cellular repair. And I, that's what I don't like. I don't, actually don't like intermittent fasting and time restricted eating. That, that sounds like no fun at all. It sounds like time restricted eating. Eating. Yeah. 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 eating. I don't know. I say eat later in an eating window. That's good. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I try not that's to call good. it a thing. I think I've noticed that but about you, if, Laura. You really, do, you really don't yeah, use if those we drugs. could, There's no, like, oh, getting through the fasting hours so I can, I mean, I am excited to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we sit down mm -hmm. and we really enjoy mm -hmm. our food. But I love my fasting hours as much as the eating time because I, I think that I can just feel you myself feel the healing. in I feel repair. Absolutely. Yes. I feel that's awake, hard. alert. And and that's I can almost feel, and my, one of my clients says, I can almost feel the autophagy, the fat being burned, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 eating away. Yeah. Isn't that cute? And yeah. it's just a visual that we like. We The term autophagy we use, it means self-cleaning. 
Uh, Dr. Bickman said something that really impacted me. He said, the more insulin resistant you get, the fatter you get, and the fatter you get, the more insulin resistant right. you get. So how do you so break that? So where, break yeah, the cycle. where, where yeah. do you, st that's what people want to know. And I wish, and, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're having this event, you're here, and then Jen Stevens is coming, and this will, uh, you know, it's just part of my March 15th, 2022, it'll go down in history. But what we're trying to do too is educate the medical community and the, those of you who were in fitness instructors, right. because there's a lot of erroneous information and I'm not faulting them. They haven't known where to look to get the Dr. Ben Bickman's. I tell Darren's there, I can tell you every podcast guest, if it's about fasting, I talk about the book because then the medical community locks arms and says, oh, a metabolic researcher from uh, Brigham Young. Oh, oh, that's all he does. Mm -hmm. And so once you see that it's, it's not funded by anybody. There's no sugar backing. There's no, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, it's what we've said during the pandemic on everything. Follow the money. The drugs your doctor wants you to take, follow the money. Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, you be an advocate for yourself. Is this the best fit for me? And that's what you both did. And that you saw something and you thought, oh, let me see if that works for me. And that's how we started. So last night we did have dinner. We They flew into Little Rock. Uh, from Portland, Oregon, and Phoenix, the mm -hmm. Phoenix Airport, Pima, Arizona, and we had a delicious dinner. And we had even what was so cute, we were all opening our window, probably about five. Was that about five o'clock? Yeah, Arca, five o'clock Central mm -hmm. Time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we all had. You had gone twenty six. No, she went twenty. You went twenty six hours. Twenty three. Well, I figured out with the time zone yes. change, it was uh -huh. around twenty three. Yeah, hours, right, which yeah. is a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. in the beginning, had you told us that we would not be eating for a day, we would have said, you are insane. But a little closer to her? Okay. Darren's over there bossing us around. Um, and so um, we had our, we had uh, cocktails and we had, because people want to know that, so what do you eat? Mm -hmm. How do you know you're getting enough? How do you know you're getting enough nutrition? And I, you know, we all know intuitively our body knows what to go for. We went to yes. kind of, head, we had some proteiny things, some I had some carbs. I mean, it's all the macros. I don't wait. I don't know. Don't mm -hmm. ask me why. I know you, you, you don't know. You used to yeah. be in that world. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. macros. Yes. And then at the end, he brought out dessert, and we all ate some. I probably ate the most because I'm a show off. <laughs> but uh, we put our fork down because our bodies told us you're done, right? Mm -hmm. And don't you think that's the most amazing thing? Is our bodies don't whisper; they shout. They do. And I had plenty of opportunity to eat along the way. You know, I had, two I had a nice long layover in the Houston airport. I was told the sign you saw. Oh, I was in the United <laughs> Lounge. But in the Portland airport, there was a sign that's, and there was a, it was a trademark sign that said, <laughs> don't fly hungry. And you could go to the gate and have your meal delivered to you at the gate. But, you know, and I just thought, okay, people, nobody knows this, but... If you fly fasted, drinking plain water only, you avoid, for the most part, any aspects of jet lag. You, I was you, just going to say, yeah. yeah that's that's your, amazing. You do. You do. Yeah. So what I did, there I was in the United Lounge, and there was a big, beautiful lunch Spread, buffet, right, buffet sure. with the salad greens and everything. And I, of course, I looked at it. Yeah. Everybody's eating. Right. You know? And so the question I ask myself is, you know, I think ahead. I think how do I feel right now? So I get really in tune with how I feel. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not, that looks good. I'm not really that hungry. And then I think ahead to when my next meal is going to be and what we're going to be eating. So I knew what time we were eating and I knew what we were eating, which yeah. is very exciting. Yeah. And then I asked myself this question, given what I have to do for the next few hours, will I feel better it's all about feeling better. Yeah. That's what I asked Fed or fasted. Yeah. Am I going to feel better fed or fasted? Mm -hmm. So then I imagine standing in that line, getting that buffet. <laughs> You're really good. Food. Yeah. I do the I same thing. I thought I was the only crazy oh, person that did this. Then, because I really want to tune in to yeah. what is going to serve, serve me. Serve me. Yeah. So this her, isn't yes. about restriction or deprivation. Mm -hmm. or, so then I'm like, That's okay, awesome. what, what is going to have me feel better right now? Fed or fasted? And then I thought, well, I'm super sleep deprived because I got up very, you know, 145, 145 in the morning, in the, morning like <laughs> the day before. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if I eat that, I'm going to want to curl up on this floor yes. and I'm never going to wake up. I'm never going to get on that plane to Little Rock because I'm going to be <laughs> just, bah. 
So I made a very conscious mm -hmm. decision. It wasn't a clock oriented decision. Good. It was a That's what good. is going to have me feel my very best. And I, and then I just got excited about doing what I was doing and getting and on the plane your and, body and, and yeah. seeing you all mm -hmm. and eating a delicious meal. And then last night our meal was quick and I was satisfied and a bite of cake and just, and none of us thought, oh, I'm trying to be good so I can only have yeah. a bite. Or no, what should I order that's or healthy on right. the no, Let me get we just salad. wrapped our fork. No, yeah. We ate what, what, what our body was mm -hmm. interested in and excited for and we put those forks down. We didn't even give it a no. not thought. Mm -hmm. So, but then I thought, I think I'm going to be really hungry t tomorrow, which is today. I was yeah. going to, I was I think I'm going to be really hungry I today. Was so I'm too. looking for, the, I'm yeah. not calculating. Right. Oh no, I only did this. And the, no. There's no. no well, even concern. today I'm thinking, are we going to eat before way later at yeah. nine o'clock? Cause no, I'm going to yeah, probably yeah, be yeah. hungrier today. Yeah. You can just tell, like, that's mm -hmm. why I, like, I try to explain to my clients all the time. Like you just will, if you get more, you just, when you're starting off slow though, well, if you're beginning to fast, start off to slow, nail the clean fast. That's just the number one rule. And I the just, clean fast, just it, Darren's over there just reminding us, the clean fast is water, sparkling water, unsweetened tea, coffee, black coffee, black coffee because no insulin re release. No. And don't, don't come at me with the your bitter diet palate. No and flavors. the zero calories. No. Yeah, don't. Plain, yep. plain, plain un only. That's plain. right. We don't want the pituitary hypothalamus, your pancreas. You don't want we don't want any anybody release. involved. Right. right. No we want to just work on those fat cells. Again, it's complete downtime. And that's yeah. what I tell my clients when they're like, but I'm so hungry. I said, of course you're going to get hungry. That's going to happen. But what I would tell myself when I would get so hungry like that, I would tell myself, I'd close my eyes and I would just say, autophagy is happening. <laughs> it is awesome. eating my fat. Autophagy is right. eating my fat cells right now. It's cleaning out all those bad cells. That's you right. just keep, yeah, be hungry. And then what I would say, go be productive, Star. Go scrub the bathroom. Go do something to make you stay busy. Because that's like my only advice. When people are like, how do you do it? I'm like, mm -hmm. stay busy. And yeah, don't sure. sit and think. And then just like Laurie said, like really... You want to appreciate those fat, the fasted time just as much as your feasting time. Mm -hmm. And those fasted hours are precious. And, and then when that feasting time comes, everyone's like, oh, eat whatever we want and shoving all this stuff in there. And I was like, your body just <laughs> no. worked so hard yeah. during that fast. How do you want to repay your body? How do you serve mm -hmm. your body by it mm -hmm. serving you all day? You give it good nutrients mm -hmm. and good nutrition. So you pay attention. You know what your body needs. Just like Laurie said yesterday, I think we all had like a, what, a one hour window because that's how yeah. long we yeah, ate, right? Yeah. But like I can already tell today, my body could probably do a five or six hour right. window. Right. Then tomorrow, guess what? Flying again, right back right. to my normal. Right. And then who knows what's going to happen. I mean, it's just every day. <laughs> I, I tell everybody, every day is a new day to do better. And that is my word for 2022 is do better. It doesn't matter what you did today. And, and if you think that you didn't do great on your meal, that's okay. I have days where I don't have great meals either because that's life. But totally. then the next day, guess what? I just try to do yeah. better. And I focus on each day. Don't be worrying about, oh my gosh, I should eat extra today so I'm not hungry tomorrow. No, we never eat for, for future, future hunger. hunger. When Jen Stevens no. said that, I was probably a year into fasting and I, you know, I probably had the chip in my <laughs> mouth going, oh crap, maybe yeah. I should. Because I thought I had to eat, because that's when I got up at 4 a.m. to do radio, it was 345. So I would think I had to get up. So I was then satisfied from 4 a.m. My window then was like 12.30 to 5.30. But then when I gave myself the permission to put the chip down and not eat for your future hunger, I felt better. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. You don't know you that. You don't know that. Mm -hmm. Be not because of instinct. It's because of media. What media tells us. Mm -hmm. There's a fourth meal. You get hangry. You have yes. to eat. And yes. then the medical community is telling us. Or erroneously, and some not everyone does it anymore. To eat five times a day, and we now know that that was that's. Not I want to say something about Star saying do better because mm -hmm. I really love that in the context of what you said a little a few minutes ago, which is 
to, what are you fueling your body with and gratitude for the amazing work that your body is yes. doing. So it's not like doing better according to some diet plan. Uh, yeah. no. It's yeah. doing better, better for, for yourself. yourself. Yeah. For yourself. Yes. How can and I serve myself too. better? Very yeah. individual. And so it means mm. paying attention mm-hmm. with honor and respect and exactly. kindness for yourself. Exactly. Like it's the ultimate self-love, mm-hmm. you know, self-care. Well, exactly. and the diet culture, and we talk about diet brain, diet which brain. is what... Since probably the maybe the seventies when women started, I mean, people picked up smoking and they lost weight. I mean, they felt like there was a benefit from it, and they had they drank tabs, and tabs. you know, I know I drank them, I drank them, you know, and would have ramen noodles because it had so many calories or whatever. So getting away from that diet brain, I notice um, a lot of my clients then don't have self love; they almost have self hate because mm-hmm. it's. I, I blew it, Lisa. I, I'm off the wagon. I go, there's no wagon. Yeah. There's no wagon. You just had a longer feasting window, and you just get back up on that horse today and ride whatever right. you do. Right. But Diet Brain told us foods were good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, water, obviously good, but um, coffee was fine with all the sugar sweeteners because there was zero calorie. No, we really said that's bad. But I don't want, I don't want people to categorize things are good or bad because then there's this also cortisol release and there's adrenal fatigue from self from not from lacking self-love i hate to say self-loathing but you said it and just appreciating yourself loving yourself and giving yourself permission that today you may eat more hours in a day it's life Mm -hmm. and i might not make the best food choices every day you know so and that's the thing because that that's just life too and I'm being a busy mom like that just happens sometimes and we're on the go so my one meal is fast food and and I you know I almost will (laughs) apologize to my body as crazy as this sounds but I and say I'm so sorry but that's all I had to eat today and and tomorrow I'll do better Mm -hmm. you know and I just wake up the next morning and I again I appreciate the fast and I and I get through it and I just feel so dang productive and you just feel so good that Mm -hmm. just like Laurie said sometimes I just I I, I'll ask myself the exact same thing how productive do I need to be because that will determine if I'm going to eat or not or what I have the rest of the day and stuff like that like if I have a an appointment at two o'clock uh, nope, I will get through the appointment fasted and then worry about food because my mind will be better and stay focused. Oh, and all. It's yeah, a, food just, If food just kind of can... so tired. Especially yeah. if you do not eat the right things, you uh, know? If, yeah. if you don't break your fast with the right things, it, it can bog your brain down a lot quicker because I feel like the insulin response, maybe it, mm-hmm. you dump a little bit more quicker, especially if you're having sugar or whatever, and yeah. it just makes you feel like, Ugh. And yeah. so you, you, have to, you do have to be kind of careful what you break. So how do you Mm -hmm. answer with your clients when they ask, Lori Star, what is your eating window? What do you say? I don't tell people. Oh, that's good. I do not want people basing their choices on what I do or what a book says or what anybody else does. I want to guide people because we have been taught the opposite. We've been taught to look externally for answers and tell me what to do and I'll do it. My whole job is to get people to focus inward on how your body and people are people have no idea which foods make them feel unwell when i when i first start Mm -hmm. coaching people we start putting food into categories Mm -hmm. your trigger foods foods that make you feel unwell foods that are your grab and go i'm exhausted Mm -hmm. i can't even take a second to think about what i'm eating and the foods that love you back and so when we get to the foods that make you feel unwell people are like what do you mean I, I don't know, I don't you know. know. Mm-hmm. So it's foods that make you feel puffy and lethargic mm-hmm. and achy mm-hmm. and have restless leg mm-hmm. and moody and ravenous an hour later. Mm-hmm. I have a client who loves these particular kinds of potato chips and she loves them. And then after really paying attention how different foods make you feel, she's like, oh, an hour after I eat those potato chips, I start craving ice cream. Like there's a direct correlation. And so we, we, these foods do mm-hmm. have an effect on us. So mm-hmm. which foods are enlivening mm-hmm. and which foods make us feel bright and energetic and sleep mm-hmm. well and in a happy mood and which foods do not. And most, mostly we have no idea. Mm-hmm. So, and mm-hmm. then we're all different. Because we're feeding ourselves so, 
all day long as the natural human society or society tells yeah, us eat three right. meals, four or five meals a right. day or whatever you're eating all the time. How in the world mm-hmm. you're, you're shoving everything in your mouth so mm-hmm. often that you have no idea what your body does or doesn't like, or what, you know, like how a, a certain meal or food will even make you feel, or if you could be allergic because you're eating yeah. so many times a day, there's just no way your body can even keep up with that. Like when I sit back and yeah, it, it's crazy to think how, much you're eating before and then how your body can still eat less but function so much better and you're also telling me um and we kind of talked about this last night at dinner do we focus on the food or do we focus on getting a fasting regimen and we all three ripped the band-aid off and just started fasting like i didn't look anything up i just told this is what to do and i went all right you mean when someone's starting? Yes, yeah. when someone's starting. Right. So I think that conventional belief is that you should get your diet in order mm-hmm. first. Get you know because fasting seems so hard. Mm-hmm. See, we can envision mm-hmm. dieting. We know what it's like to yeah. kind of try and get mm-hmm. control of our yeah. eating, but we can't envision what fasting is going to be like. Uh-huh. So I think there's this myth that fasting will be easier if you sort your food out first. But that isn't true in my experience. Mm, I that, totally agree. That people are, food is so emotional and confusing for people. And the body mm. is not awake yet. See, fasting makes us, makes the body awake. We're in tune. Mm, so yeah. that in tuneness helps us figure out which foods to eat. So if you can gradually, or some people rip off the Band-Aid and mm-hmm. just dive mm-hmm. right into a longer fasting schedule, I believe in going gradually. Um because that means people increase their likelihood of staying with it. Oh, I see. And mm-hmm. so um, if people can start fasting first and gradually increasing the clean fasting hours and decreasing the eating window, then we sort the food out. Then it's like, oh, I notice when I eat this, this makes mm-hmm. me feel sluggish or this makes me feel bright and awake. Huh. If I eat this with this and I feel really good and I can carry on my day, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so that food discovery is the biggest part of it, but that comes for me and my experience in myself and coaching others after we've and uh, along the way of, of establishing and creating a fasting regimen. And don't you so think fasting we, we continue to tweak though forever? Yeah, yeah forever. Yeah. And even with that, like, even if you eat something too, some people like the next day, I will always ask my clients, well, I have my clients send me their food. So then I'm kind of watching what they eat too. And if they, and I ask them to tell me how they felt too for the day. So like, how did you feel today? Were you hungry at, you know, so sometimes it's like, okay, I was really hungry at 10 o'clock, but I was able to push through, or I had a headache or this or that. And I always will look the day before at what they ate and nine, eight out of 10 times, they've had maybe something sweet the day before and it affects your next day. Like you might get hungrier sooner because you did have the sugar, you know? So then it's like, okay, well then, so then on this day, we're going to probably do a little bit less sugar so we can feel better the next day, you know? And so you just have to alternate. And I get the same thing people all the time. Well, what are your fasting hours? What Mm -hmm. are your fasting hours? And I, my answer is, you would have to DM me every day because every <laughs> yeah. day is different yeah. and I Good. will not talk to you every day. So <laughs> don't DM Boundaries. me every day. Boundaries it's right literally there. so different every day. And that's why I just post it every day because it's just so different. One day it's 16 hours, one day it's 23, mm-hmm. one day it's 18. But, you know, my I do have a goal in my head usually for me personally. Yeah. I like to be around 20 hours fasted. It's just where my body seems like it's jam. I do like a smaller window because on days that I allow myself to have longer windows, especially if I'm home, I just kind of will snack on junk sometimes. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I just go back to my fat girl days or what it yeah. is, but I just will start like grabbing the Cheetos mm-hmm. and then I go, Star, what are you mm-hmm. doing? And then I'll put them back and go, you know what? We just, I think I just need to close my window because if not, it's, I'm going to just do mindless snacking yeah. because I'm bored and because my window's open yeah. and because I'm an mm-hmm. intermittent faster, I can. Yeah. And it's like, no, I need to do what's best for my body. But sometimes I can't even control myself. So I just yeah. have to close my window and say, Star, just stop. You, you don't need to binge out on all this food. You're just fine. You had your food. You're fine. And then sometimes I'll try to evaluate like, well, maybe I'm missing a nutrient. If I'm still craving something that much after, you know, you're Mm -hmm. probably missing something. So then I will really try to focus on 
what, what did I eat? And may, I probably didn't get enough protein. So tomorrow yeah. I'm going to stack it up. Sometimes I even add a protein shake in my eating yeah, window just that, yeah. to, you know, just to add, just to balance things out sometimes. So yeah, I, I add everything mixed into fasting. I've really noticed too, and we know this food manufacturers to create these highly palatable foods, they circumvent our satiety signals. So yeah. the brains, like if I eat and I've used this with my clients, you could eat, you can't eat just one Lay's. They tell you that. And you'd eat the whole bag, but you'd never eat two fully loaded baked potatoes because you'd finally get sick because <laughs> the yeah. brain recognizes it. So um, I have a pantry here. My granddaughters come over and they like, um, you know, crab food, goldfish, right? Mm -hmm. So they go and get them. And one time, I guess my window was open and my granddaughter said, here, Gabby, you can have some. And I had some. And you know what it made me? It made me so much hungrier. Yes. And I oh, never what... felt full. I yes. was like, no. And so I think I went and probably put a sweet potato in the oven to to get to the nutrients kind of, of something yes. Yes. yes exactly because it does trigger it does trigger. something mm -hmm. that makes your body going is is it here what's next what's, what's, exactly and you can't get the satisfaction and you can't you can't get the satiety yes, that happens it's to me crazy. it's crazy how the junk food does that as yeah. soon as i allow myself even the few bites sometimes yeah. i just turn into this ravenous like give me all the processed junk food yeah. and i'm like what and mm -hmm. that's when i have to just shut it down and be like, no, because I know that that's what it's from. I know it's from the, the one thing I'm missing that I haven't replaced yet in my diet because of that. I want someone to churn some ice cream for me and bring it over because <laughs> yeah. I feel like the stuff at the grocery store is kind of, it's probably crap. Mm -hmm. We do have a local mm -hmm. ice cream. Here. Mm -hmm. I know I love it, but I just don't want to keep it because I'm afraid then I would always like those the time I had the goldfish that would never quite but feel But see, you're tuned in and you respect how you feel. And I love what you said, Star, about paying close attention with your clients about how you feel today. And let's look at what you ate yesterday or let's look at your sleep or let's look exactly. at did you just experience some stress? Yes. So nowhere have we said, I'm going to go stand on the scale to determine uh, oh, what I no. should or yeah. shouldn't oh, good boy. yesterday. Yeah, that's, so yeah, yeah. the yeah. fact that... We people are like, am I allowed to have dessert? Yes, mm -hmm. I have dessert. Right. And how does it make you feel? They're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So this this is why having a health coach is so special and important. It's it's an accountability partner mm -hmm. who knows a lot more than you do about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a really experienced coach who can say, okay, you feel this particular way right now. What time is it? How many hours fasted are you? Well, that's typical around hour 16. Okay, can you get over this hump or you have a headache? How are you doing in electrolytes? Let's look at what you ate yesterday. So nowhere are we saying you can't have mm -hmm. a bite of chocolate mm -hmm. cake or the whole cake. Mm -hmm. We just want to notice how that makes mm -hmm. you feel Timing. right now, mm -hmm. how that makes you sleep, mm -hmm. how that makes you feel tomorrow. And I don't want to overcomplicate it. it. Just, you know, we don't go through life just thinking that much about mm -hmm. it. One of the great things about intermittent fasting is how much food is not on our minds. So. Never. <laughs> I don't think about it until it's time to eat. Truly. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Guys, I used to plan my day out as to, because I was told Lunch five times. And, yeah. I, I mean, even I had 9 a.m. snack, you know, because I ate my eggs at 4 a.m. Then 9 a.m., then noon, then 3, then 6. I was hungry all day. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize the beast that insulin is, that once you light the match, and it then, just keeps burning. Yes, yeah. I never could feel, I never felt satiety. I always went eat my own food. I went for seconds. Now I don't. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many times, I know you do too, that you'll eat a few bites and that appetite correction, which is a phenomenon that Dr. Bird Herring talks about. It's like somebody drops the anvil on your plate and you're like, can't eat That's it. it. Okay. I'm done. done. Right. I'm done. Yeah, and I've heard Jen say and others, there's a sigh that we do mm -hmm. sometimes when we're satisfied. Yeah, you're eating, eating, eating. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. You're loving it. Your body's so happy to be having that. And then all of a sudden, you put your fork down and you lean back. It's like, ah. Mm -hmm. It's like, and mm -hmm. I'm done. Yeah. That's it. And it's okay. And mostly we're like, oh, no, I want more. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. I was going to say, I usually get mad because I'm like, I, know, I really want to eat the rest of that. Or I have like, I don't know if it's from my childhood or what, but it's like, you don't waste the food. Child. No, don't waste yeah, food. So yeah. you have to eat all your food mm -hmm. on your plate. But then I'm like, but what? What if I'm full? Like I don't right. want to keep. Why would I, I put it in me it, rather than the trash can? Yeah. Why would I put it in me yeah. rather than in the Tupperware with the lid on yeah. to have later? And that's it, right? <laughs> there are a lot of leftovers we have. Yep, restaurants. That's how we are. I yeah. do hate traveling though, and that really expensive oh, yes. steak. 
I had steak the other night and it had crawfish and some things oh on it. Gosh, yeah. And it was very rich too. So I really did put my fork down and thought, I know I was out of town. I don't have a little Tupperware container. <laughs> to take it That's it. But you do. That's you just it. say. You just have to say oh, it was delicious. Right. And, and put, yeah, your fork down. put your fork down. And you're done. What do you say to people? I, I get this pushback a lot. Lisa, I'm going to start intermittent fasting after my daughter's wedding because I'm oh. so busy. Right. Or, or Monday. Or Monday, uh. Monday for sure. And I go, <laughs> what, what are you doing right now? Right. <laughs> right. Why don't you not eat till about 2 o'clock or whatever? Because they think it's going to be harder than it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They think that it's very effortful. Mm-hmm. And they're afraid they don't know how they're going to feel. And so they just... And, and after a lifetime of dieting, yeah. we plan the date when we're going to start. And yeah. we mm-hmm. think we have to do mm-hmm. all these things to start. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, no. Okay. What time today are you going to stop eating? And they're like, well, should it be? No. Right. What time do you normally eat dinner? Mm -hmm. And what time would you like to say that you're going to stop eating, close your eating window, and start drinking plain unflavored water? And just pick a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, 8 p.m. Great. Drink plain water. Sleep. If you're bored because you don't know what to do with yourself because you're not snacking, go to bed. Mm -hmm. And write in your journal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then wake up in the morning, have plain water, have plain black coffee people are like do i have to have coffee no, no. right yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to have water right yeah, if you like water. coffee if you like bitter black or green mm-hmm. tea go for it but then add 12 hours 8 a.m and can you make it until 8 a.m and some people are like "Ooh, that's a stretch other people are like of really? course I don't oh even think about yeah it. some yeah. people okay. it's hard to make Just it 12 hours baby yeah. steps okay because they they drink flavored things right up until they go to sleep mm-hmm. usually, and then they wake uh, up and and oh, drink sure, flavored things sure. or have I can see that, bites right. of things the minute they wake up. Yeah. So mm-hmm. most people really aren't even fasting more than seven or eight hours the time that they're asleep. Asleep, yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. When you say, what do you say to people who are like, I'm going to start that after? It's you can just be mindful today mm-hmm. of when you're eating. Okay. That alone, and then just yeah. yeah. The first question, eating? and then the first question I get is, "Can I still have my wine?" <laughs> oh, oh yeah. why? Yeah, and I yes. say, "Well, yes." yes. And, and your eating, eating window, yes, your eating window. They'll say, "But what do you do when you?" It, men will say, "Do you not eat ice cream when you watch TV?" I go, "Huh?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I guess mm-hmm. it's just their habit. Whatever their it's a habit tradition. It's a, habit. Was. It's a tradition. Go, yeah. yeah, habit. And it's mm-hmm. the same thing with the glass of wine. Don't you and Chris want to sit and have a glass of wine at eight or nine o'clock at night? I go, "No." I think these are new habits, though. I think when I was growing up in the 70s, right. dinner was I, I over. Agree. Oh, we I didn't agree. eat after. We no. had to eat all our dinner, no. and then maybe we would have dessert, and then it's like kitchen closed. Well, Dr. Fung <laughs> talks about that in one of, like, maybe his original book. He said, we um, Americans in the 50s, you know, dad went to the lumber mill and worked, and mom stayed home. <laughs> now, they smoke, you know, and they drink cocktails, but he said... They ate, dad would have a glass of black or have a cup of black coffee out the door and then maybe the kids ate. And then at 5.30, the forks went down. He said, right. nobody ate past. There wasn't really a TV set to sit around and watch my, and do my, or on your device, do mindless things. Mm. He said, so as those hours extended, because we want to know when the trajectory of this massive obesity, this isn't just a weight, a little weight gain, it's massive obesity what the trajectory is. And so we all want to go back. And I know the timeline makes sense to me. And then, you know, in the seventies, we, there were diet drinks. And then the eighties, we started telling people to do low fat. I did low fat. Low fat. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we kept getting bigger and bigger and we felt terrible. And so on and on and on. The other thing that Dr. Fung talks about this one science thing, and I know you know this, it's, and he says it happens after about hour 18 or 19, why we're all saying we feel, it's it's so counterculture to what they've been told. We feel so much better because our little adrenal glands back there release adrenaline. And we have so much energy. I'd say mm. for me at about hour 20, 21, mm. what do you need done? I'll run any for area for burn, you. The burning fat that I know that I'm a fat burning machine and my mm-hmm. body is in ketosis on this incredibly clean bright fuel and I just could keep humming humming along. Yeah, the other thing that Jen Stevens says is because the keto community, meaning the ketogenic people and the ketogenic uh, philosophy of low carb, high fat, which is great, if that's what you do, that's great. 
But she says, we reach ketosis even if we've had a baked potato the day before. Of course. Mm-hmm. But that is no not... No one believes that. No when one I say, that. I'm in ketosis every day as an intermittent they're fast. Like, but what did you like, eat? No, you're not. Yeah, what did you, you eat, eat carbs. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so what is the science with that? It's just that our body, once it switches over to fat burning, we get into in ketosis. ketosis. Yeah. That's because mm-hmm. we're not eating all the time, we have... The way we burn our fuel is kind of linear. Um, We use up the food we just ate. We're using the glucose in our blood. Then we're going to the stored glucose, the glycogen, mostly in our liver. And when you're an intermittent faster, you're like chipping away at that in the beginning. That's why the first two to three weeks can be hard for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, people feel better almost instantly, but there are moments of, of the really the body going through an adjustment. It's almost regret. I'm telling you, the first few days, (laughs) it's almost regret. And so once you've chipped away at the glycogen stores in the liver, every time you eat, you're just increasing a little. It's not like you're filling the whole thing up again because we're intermittent fasters. We've drained that tank pretty much. And so whatever you eat, it's just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And because we're in ketosis, yeah. yeah. It empties quickly. Mm We're fat adapted and easily shifting from when that like those glycogen stores are drained, then we're easily flipping that metabolic switch, shifting into fat mm-hmm. burning, which is this amazing, bright, clean energy. And so because we're fasting every day, fasting clean, that happens around hour 12 or 13. So early oh, in the nice. morning, okay. what, you know, you just whenever you closed your yeah. eating window the day mm-hmm. before, you had 12 mm-hmm. or 13 hours, you're burning fat. That's and amazing. Just like, Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. Okay, we've got how much time, Darren, did you say? About five minutes. Okay, let's wrap up with... Um, I just heard, I don't know if Sinclair said it or Huberman, one of their guests was saying, feed, protect the liver, feed the gut. That that needs Robert to be. Lustig. It was Robert Lustig, yes. So tell me kind of the philosophy. What are things we can do to protect the liver and feed the gut? Well, we have to eat real food. And most people are like, what do you mean? Don't they sell real food at the grocery store? Not a lot. Yeah. So this is why I say get your fasting regimen sorted for yourself. What does that mean? Settle in to your eating window groove, your favorite time frame of when it just most days makes you really happy. Like what's your like jam? Start, you're I like, well, some days yeah. it's this, some days it's yeah. that. But if I really, I say mm-hmm. to people, if you had to pick one eating window forever, exactly. when yeah. would it be? And and settle into that, and then start. Figuring out, oh, a potato is real food, broccoli is real food, an apple is real Mm -hmm. whole food. So to protect the liver and feed the gut, all that gut bacteria and our amazing, brilliant liver that just works so beautifully and magnificently, eat real food. So read uh, Dr. Robert Lustig's book called Metabolical. Um, right, right. Is that the new book? Yeah, that's his new book. Okay, that's what I heard and him talking about. On he's a Huberman pediatric endocrinologist, wow. <laughs> which is wow. really interesting in, the, in San hormones. Francisco. Yeah, hormones. yeah. Eat real food and intermittent fast. Okay. And Dr. David Sinclair, who's um, who wrote the book Lifespan, and he's one of the world's leading experts in longevity, he says the number one thing that people can do, every person can do today to feel better and to live longer is to intermittent fast and to eat less often. So protect the liver. Now, some of those people, you know, I think Huberman says eight hour window's fine. And so that kind of makes us cringe because I go, no, you need to figure out for yourself. Yeah, Yeah, I just, I hate that they put a label like women can't do this, men can't do this, age is this, age is that. It is so bio-individual for, oh yeah, Mm -hmm. your menstrual cycle. It's like, you, you just, every day is going to be different. So you just have to do what's and best for your body that day. Person. And then every person is different. So we're not all going to have the same meeting windows. They're going to change all the time, daily for every person. Yeah. All the time. And don't you love the satisfaction you get from eating real food mm. and how you don't leave any place hungry. You mm. don't. And just, that's why I do with my clients. I told you guys last night, I, we go to the grocery store and they're so shocked that we don't walk anywhere in the inside of that store unless they need canned tomatoes. I said, if you need canned tomatoes, they're right there. <laughs> but I said, because tomatoes, sometimes yeah. they're not in season. You, I said, mm-hmm. and I don't, I mean, that's a choice they have to make. But I said, there are so, there's a bounty here when you go through the fruits and vegetables, you could roast anything. I roast apples and put 
cinnamon and butter, butter and raisins. And to on most them. people, that sounds like diet food. Well, not right. the butter part. No, but the, they're right, like, right. oh, you know, so yeah. that's what you eat. have to no. have. Oh, it's yeah. so satisfying. It's just what you choose to. Yeah. People yeah. Because, yeah. suddenly start craving yes. intermittent fasters start craving Brussels sprouts, which is a hoot. It but there's so at funny. some point they're like. What's the deal with me? My body wants Brussels sprouts. And same thing with the meat. You know, if you're a meat eater, you could go through and roast anything, mm. anything that walks the earth, and it's delicious. We love our food, yeah, and we, we love our it. fasting hours. Yeah. So oh, I love. It. And I heard one time that Ash or Jen and the question she asked on the Intermittent Fasting podcast: What's more important, the fast or the feast? And her answer was yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both. it's both. Mm-hmm. Didn't you in Absolutely. the beginning think it was the fast? Well, I thought I had I, to push through and do it a certain I way. Just, and, yeah, I just yeah. thought I had to push through the fast part and then just hurry up and get to the part where I can eat. You know, yeah. it's like in the yeah. very beginning, you look at it so differently. And that's why I wanted to, mm-hmm. to do the coaching, too, because I was like, I don't I don't want people to start out where I started out with. I would rather them start out more mindful and more like, yes, do pay attention to what you're eating. Yes, you can have what you want in your window, but how does that food make you feel? Let's pay attention to that. You know, like let's be just so mindful of everything and the mindless snacking will go away. And the, my, one of my biggest pet peeves when people say, well, I, I didn't fast today. I always say, did you <laughs> sleep? I do so, so, so when someone says, I don't want to start till da da da, my right. answer is, did you sleep? And have you had anything yet? Because you've already started Uh if you slept. So we already have those hours in. Now, what you choose to do that next day, whether you choose to Uh open your window early or whatever, Uh you have chosen that. And then you'll be okay with that decision. There's no guilt. There's no, I shouldn't have done that. No, 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 just just be aware, be aware and just be aware and then, and serve your body that day and give it the food and the nutrients it needs. You two are rock stars. Aren't they rock stars, Darren? (laughs) I, I am I am humbled and honored That's that so you fun. would be here and do this, oh, and you both flew you. in for this event. And yes. it's it's really you know the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. It is locking arms and saying you can do this for people watching. That we all we all said it was hard in the beginning. There mm-hmm. in the beginning, and plus I felt like a lone wolf. You were a lone wolf. You know mm-hmm. we didn't have anyone around us really telling us you can do it, and you kind of feel crazy. Mm-hmm. And then you like. You're thinking, oh, this is this is the way my body is fit. Mm-hmm. This is the way our bodies are designed. Our design. Totally. Yeah, the design. reason our ancestors didn't eat when their stomach growled was there was no food. There was no food. So right. in terms of human evolution, I just say that's an alert system to go mm-hmm. out and get food in six hours or tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean just because our stomach growled right. we need to eat this yeah. very second. second. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm going to link your social media, uh, your book, and your podcast episodes. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.